Hello. My name is Logan Miller, and I am both a project management technical consultant and the adaptive work learning and development specialist for Colme Group. One of my responsibilities in my position here is to conduct training sessions both internally and for our customers. And in giving these training sessions, one of the aspects of adaptive work that I'm asked to review the most is the difference between filters and views. Now, when I first started my adaptive work journey, I struggled so much with views and filters that I had to put post-it notes on my laptop just to try to remember to check them. Anytime I was in the system and something wasn't working like it was supposed to, or I was missing information, I would get so frustrated and assume that I had done something wrong, only I couldn't find where the problem was. 99% of the time, I discovered that I had filters applied that were preventing certain information from being displayed. The moment that that finally clicked was the moment that I papered my laptop with those sticky notes. It was the only way that I could remember to check them. What I have learned, however, is that the more that I use adaptive work, the more that has become almost like muscle memory. And now I always check my filters first at the first sign that something doesn't look right. One of the most unique and desired features of adaptive work is the ability to customize the instance to fit a company's needs and processes. And one of the easiest ways to do this is with views and filters. Now, while these words, views and filters, can sometimes be misconstrued as interchangeable, they are actually very different and perform differently within an environment. So what exactly does a view do in adaptive work? Well, a view controls the look of the module or the object. It can be shared with others in the system, um, such as other users or user groups, and it can be created for very specific workflows. So you can have a view for project managers or a view for resource managers. It really can be tailored to those certain roles. They also can be temporary or permanent. Um, you can make changes to a view that are not going to stay once you've logged out of the system, or you can make those permanent changes that are gonna be there every single time you log in. A user can also create multiple views for the same object or module. Now, what we're looking at right here is our project module. And for the view, this is exactly what you're looking at. So the view is how the information is displayed not what information is displayed, but how you're looking at it. So if I come up here to my views dropdown and I click edit, I can actually go into the back of this view or what I call the view editor, and I can make changes to the columns. So these are the columns that display on that view. If I want to change my columns, if I want to take columns out or put columns in, or if I wanna change where they're located in that view, in that grid view, I can do that right here. And as soon as I hit save, that is now the view. That any changes that I have made are now the view and it'll stay like that every time I choose that view. Now, if I wanna make temporary changes, I can do that here in the front of the view. I can take a column and I can move it down or I can move this one up. However, I need to look at the data that will help me be more efficient in my job. Now, as a user, I can absolutely create as many different views as I need to um, for even a specific module. I can have four different project module views if I need to, as long as it is displaying the information that I need to see. Now, adaptive work is an extremely robust system. And the downside to that is that it can be very overwhelming to the user if every project raid item or task is available to view. In a very busy active system, there can be hundreds of these records. And imagine having to sift and sort through each one to find the exact one that you need to work on that day. This can cause some serious frustration and inhibit adoption. So we mitigate this by using filters. Now, a filter in adaptive work allows you to remove information that you don't want to see and only displays the information that you do want to see. For example, if I only want to see projects in my project module that are in the active state, I can absolutely take these others out. So I'm actually going to move this column over here to the front and I'm going to apply a filter. I'm going to come to my filters. I'm going to find the state filter and I'm going to choose active because that's the only project I want to see. I really don't need to work on anything else. 
certainly nothing that's completed, so I only want to see those active ones. I'm going to click OK. And now I have gone from 10 projects down to seven, and that's much easier to manage, especially, like I said, when you have a very busy active system. There could be 50 projects in here that I'm a part of, and that would be a lot to sort through. Now, this is where the post-it notes took over my workspace. When you apply a filter on a view, it becomes sticky or it will stay in place until you clear that filter or you change them. So if you're working in the system and you have applied filters, it's very easy to forget that they've been applied. Now imagine, or maybe this has even happened to you, you sit down, you open your PPM tool and your heart stops when you are expecting to see 40 projects and you only see three. Cue the check your sticky notes or check your filters sticky notes. I really believe that the confusion between views and filters comes in with the use of views because as mentioned, you can change or rearrange the look of the whole page. And with filters, you are changing the actual information that is displayed on that page. So they can kind of get a little confusing, but if all else fails, check your sticky notes. 